Hello everybody, welcome to the Fairy Whispering Podcast. I'm your host Claire Silverwand. It's Bambi weather here in the southwest of England, drip drop lots of April showers. We have just changed to British summer time which means longer days and sunny evenings and more time to explore the wild places and connect with enchantment. I wanted to give a shout out to some of my favourite podcasts I'm loving at the moment. Otherworld with Jack Wagner. He's had a few fairy themed episodes featuring gnomes and lots of supernatural experiences. Some Other Sphere Pod is always great. Bogart and Banshee, which is full of fairy lore. Modern Fairy Sightings with my fairy research colleague the lovely Joe Hickey Hall, Hair in the Hawthorn on YouTube and a new supernatural thriller podcast I've started listening to is Black Velvet Fairies which has already got me hooked. Thank you to everyone who supports Fairy Whispering. I love putting these episodes together for you. If you enjoy this episode please share it with friends Liking and reviewing helps the show grow and the video version of this episode is out this Saturday on my Fairy Whisperer YouTube channel. Now, on to the episode. In this ethereal episode of the Fairy Whispering podcast, we venture into the heart of Scotland's mystical allure with fairy artist and online educator Lucy Bryden. With ancestry rooted in the land of locks and legends, Lucy's passion for her homelands, enchanting flora, fauna and folklore shines through her multifaceted artistic endeavours. Lucy co-hosts the Celtic Collective Art Club with her friend Karen Campbell. Together, they guide students through fairy folklore with their art lessons and hold art retreats in ancient Scottish castles. Lucy recounts her spine-tingling encounters in one of these castles where the echoes of the past manifest in mysterious footsteps and whispering spirits. As Lucy shares her experiences, we ponder the intersection of art and the supernatural and how creative expression can sometimes entice otherworldly revelations. Our journey takes an eerie turn as Lucy recalls twilight walks in the woods that watch, a place where the veil between worlds seems gossamer thin and the presence of the fae feels almost tangible. Lucy's tales invite us to consider the unseen forces that dance beyond our perception, from blue orbs shimmering with an otherworldly glow to a rabbit that may not be a rabbit at all. You can support the podcast with a donation on my Fairy Whisperer Buy Me A Coffee page or on the podcast Buzzsprout page. Then follow us on social media for more fairy encounters and nature musings. You're listening to the Fairy Whispering podcast episode 41, Rabbit That's Not A Rabbit. Enjoy, and I will come back to you at the end with some final thoughts. The Fairy Whispering Podcast explores guests' encounters with the other world of fairy and ways of connecting with this realm. From listening to messages in owl's hoots, finding a four-leaf clover, chasing rainbows or inviting a gnome to dinner. I'm Claire Sylvan Wand, a fairy whisperer, researcher and your guide on this journey. Take my hand and step into the twilight woodland where they are waiting to meet you. Welcome, Lucy. Oh, I'm Hi. To finally get to have a chance to chat with you. Yes, it's it's fantastic. And um, 
I I really admire your mixed media artwork and um, yeah, I've wanted to speak with you for a while and I thought it'd be lovely because you do art workshops in castles, don't you, which is fantastic and part of doing those, you've had some, some spooky experiences so I thought that'd be yeah. a great place to start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, so we do a yearly uh, Scottish Castle Art Retreat, mm-hmm. which um, which is cut down to SCAR, which doesn't sound that great, but <laughs> Scottish Castle Art Retreat. And we, um, I don't know if I should say the name of the castle. I don't know if they'd want to be outed. Um, yeah. <laughs> Although I think we have spoken about it on our podcast, so maybe it doesn't matter too much but it's it's a very old castle and it's been owned by the same family for hundreds and hundreds of years it's absolutely beautiful we've been doing art retreats there since 2019 and obviously this is Karen and myself we do lots of fun projects together we get on really well and we have a lot of fun doing projects together um, obviously, we had a break because of the pandemic. So mm. um, we've now had three, I think. This, mm. We had three and we're actually doing another art retreat uh, starting next week, but in a different castle. So we're intrigued to see what happens in that castle because this one that we've spent a lot of time in, has had a lot we've had a lot of strange experiences Mm. so Mm. to start at the beginning Mm. the first time that we arrived the the activity basically happened from the minute we arrived so Karen and I arrived at the castle on the first day or I think it was even maybe the the night before the participants were coming yes The owner of the castle showed us around everything and then she left to go into her apartment. It was actually, she's actually now the ex-wife of the owner, so she's not involved anymore. But she left to go into her apartment, um, which was the door in front of us. So they Mm -hmm. live in a wing of the castle and we were standing outside the kitchen and in front of us was her door. So she went that way in front of us. And we were just standing in the hallway outside the kitchen, basically saying to each other, oh, my goodness, this place is amazing. We can't believe like we're here and it's just so beautiful. And literally, we were talking. I felt a shift in the air. and heavy footsteps coming down the corridor that was the opposite direction to where the owner had gone. So the the, the opposite direction led out towards the main door of the castle. And Karen and I both turned round. It was so real. It was so mm. genuinely real that we actually just thought, oh, did she go into her apartment and then somehow go out and round and back through and she's coming back to meet us. We thought that that was what was happening, was the owner was coming back to meet us, but nobody nobody came round the corner um, of the corridor. Mm. And not only did we hear the footsteps, but I also felt a shift in the air. Like, you know, when someone is in your area, you can feel that that change in energy and so we were that's a bit weird and then we walked down the corridor to see if anyone was coming and nobody was coming and we walked out of the castle and we were standing or maybe we're standing in the entrance hallway and then the owner did come round she came back round the way Mm -hmm. that we come and she was like okay so is everything okay and I said to her, is this castle haunted? <laughs> she had the most sheepish, sheepish look on her face. She kind of looked at me 
with this sort of sort of trying to judge me face and went mm-hmm. would it bother you if it was <laughs> <laughs> and then we said I said I said no I just think that I already had something happen and she said mm-hmm. what and I explained to her and she she kind of again looked a little bit sheepish and just said yeah that sounds about right to me and so we that year we probably had two or three other experiences there's Mm. there's a pair of grandfather clocks in that corridor Mm. and the door of one opens and closes like (laughs) it opens continuously Mm. and we tried to debunk it is there a draft but the draft wasn't opening the grandfather clock that was closer to the door Mm -hmm. in the entrance hallway but it was and it wasn't opening the other grandfather clock but just this one um we found out later in the years following that that is a common occurrence that this door opens and closes to the point that now if the door's wide open (laughs) close the door and say can you just keep it closed for a little while please yeah. I've actually had it open seen it open closed it been standing in the corridor with my back to the door to the grandfather clock mm-hmm. turned around and it's open again yeah wow. it, it's, it's a so super common this is a door into a room or a door it's the door to... to the mechanism of the clock oh I see yes you know, like how on the front of a grandfather clock, there's that little wooden door that yeah open that you can see the weight that yeah works. It's, it's that I'm... door. It's it swings. Ah. And shuts. Um, we had we didn't hear too many stories that year because that year the housekeeper that we then since met and the manager um, of the property weren't working there it was just the owner and his wife and we didn't really chat with them about the ghosts but we did Mm. have a few other spooky things happen where there was one evening where we were all in the large drawing room very large lounge Mm -hmm. and the way that the castle is set out is that, that if you went through the entrance hallway on your right there's there's a morning room which is like a small room and then through Mm. there is the large extremely beautiful drawing room and then to the left is a little library and then in front of you is the stone corridor where I heard the footsteps and the stone corridor circumvents the library and then goes round and through to the kitchens right one of our residents one of our guests Mm. Was we had no Wi Fi that year, the Wi Fi wasn't working. Oh gosh, and yeah. it was mm. actually wonderful, Claire. Yeah. yeah, it just made us shut off for the whole week. Yeah, it was just so mm. lovely not having people mm. constantly going online, and yeah, it's just so nice actually. But so we had no Wi Fi, but also, if you've ever been up in castles in Scotland, do you mm. realize that? quite often you don't even get a phone signal because they're in the middle of nowhere the walls are really thick granite Um, so there was no phone signal in the castle either which was just as brilliant and um, but one of the one of our guests wanted to um send an email or something Mm -hmm. she was standing outside the castle in the grounds outside the castle yeah Um, trying to get a signal to send her email and she came running through to where we were all in the drawing room and said were was one of you just in the library just now and no we were no we were all in this room and she said because the lights went on and off Mm -hmm. and someone rapped really sharply on the window and she thought that it was one of us knocking on the window to get her attention she looked up but it it wasn't and then we later found out from the chef we had a Mm. chef doing Mm -hmm. our catering and she had worked she'd done lots of events at this castle Mm. 
that she had similar experiences where in the in the corridor for any American listeners that's hallway <laughs> in the hallway outside the kitchen yeah. where we heard the footsteps hmm. she actually had someone speak in her ear one time oh when gosh. she was on her own so she was getting ready for an event and there was yeah. no else in the castle and somebody hmm. spoke in her ear hmm. and then she also had heard about somebody I don't know if it was a, one of her servers uh-huh. be like that was outside the castle near the kitchen sitting on the windowsill mm-hmm. I think she was having like a sneaky smoke yeah. and somebody rapped on the window okay behind her. yeah like, it's off the windowsill kind of rap mm-hmm. and she stood up and then she um, was like, oh, I don't know what that was. Sat back down and it happened again. Oh, uh, to try so somebody, to get, yeah. yeah. So that was the first year. Mm. And then we had a gap because mm. of the pandemic. And we were there last year. And last year, it was absolutely fascinating. We actually had... We actually had a... Um, sorry, can we stop for a second? Pause for yeah, a second. yeah, that's fine. I just saw your Pause. message. Okay. Yeah, so that following that um, last year, when we had our first one after the pandemic, was super interesting for two reasons. Hmm. The first being there was a housekeeper had started who who also had lots of ghostly stories to tell yeah. us actually mm-hmm. she we heard more from her this year but yeah. also we had um one of our guests was mm. a woman who was really particularly sensitive right. um, who yeah. sense and and she's very genuine she's mm. not somebody who would just um make up things just for the sake of it no sure Mm. and and because Karen and I have known her for quite a long time had lots of chats with her about her past experiences so we knew when she was coming to the castle um her name's Ginger like Ginger you're gonna have to tell us what it is that you are feeling in this place because Mm. we know you're gonna feel something and what the best way she described it yeah was that this place is like a real life version of bbc ghosts okay yeah yeah she said it's full of people yeah but they're just the past residents mm. of the castle which is actually how the owner had described it to me when i first said is this place haunted she said yeah but they're just it's just the people that used to live here. yeah sure mm. Mm. and so we had quite a few strange experiences that that week but on top of that we also had the the in the psychic insights of this woman who mm. could sense sense who was there and yeah what their what they were who they were Mm. um they there was a the one of the one of the women in the Mm. house Mm -hmm. the women ghosts in the house was apparently um the first kind of lady layered So she was the first woman to be the Laird. And Ginger had said that she, I hope I get all this information correct. Ginger had said that she sent that there was a woman who was really the woman of the house. You know, she was kind of, Mm -hmm. this is my place. Mm -hmm. And she sensed her in the library and around the stairs. Mm -hmm. And 
what's interesting is that, and I'll speak about this more in a minute, but, and I got me my, my facts wrong about the housekeeper because there was a housekeeper and a manager and it was a manager that we met last year and she told us lots of interesting extra stories about okay. other people that had experienced things. But this year we met the housekeeper who actually does experience things and her experiences corroborated what Ginger had told us. And the two of them hadn't met. And yeah, spoke. that's interesting, isn't it, when that happens? Yeah. yeah. And and so she would tell us things. As soon as we met her, mm. we said, oh, tell us about the ghosts. And we had so many interesting conversations. And she was telling us conversations. Um, Karen and I were like, that's what Ginger told us last year. Yeah. Like, that's, that's exactly what Ginger said. Mm -hmm. So we had Ginger go around the castle and she would say things like, yeah, in, in this room I can sense, it, there was in one room she sensed quite a, a little bit lechy male presence who right. she said, yeah. I feel like he's trying to push me down onto the bed. And oh, there was gosh. one, there was one, evening when she was upstairs in the top floor where her bedroom was mm. and she felt a shift of energy coming up the stairs and she actually saw almost like from the knees down mm. some legs she saw oh, yeah yeah like old-fashioned stockings and shoes yeah and then in her ear <laughs> She heard a voice say, hello, ladies, which is a little bit creepy. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. That because would... we're a castle full of ladies. It was only ladies on this retreat. Yeah. They sound like, I mean, this is just my kind of intuitive interpretation of it, that these people, former existing people that were there, they were kind of just... They're quite welcoming, but protective of their, a little bit protective yeah. of their space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But maybe by the second time you went, they were just like, oh, it's those people again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And perhaps showing them, showing up a showing little them, bit more. I think as every year has gone on, they've shown themselves. Yeah. So, so we definitely had like the, the noises and the clock last year. And then we had all of Ginger's, um, unseen to us but seen to her experiences which mm. I 100% trust and she said that there was there was she sensed in the hallway where we heard the footsteps she sensed mm. someone in uh, a military position and then we found out later that the castle had been a hospital during the war and so mm. there had been soldiers there during the war and she sensed um that a particular man the way that she described him then when we described him to the housekeeper she she told us oh, oh yeah that's uncle george and it was like the gra great grandfather or something the current layered and that she had seen him as well. She'd actually seen him. She was polishing silverware one time. Oh, and in the reflection of the yeah. silverware, she saw him. Right. So that he waved at her. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's quite a meditative. This is what I'm, you know, I'm interested in this. I have this term for what I do, fairy whispering. Yeah. You know, that's what why I've called the podcast very whispering is that yes I'm an artist too and meditative state that we get into when we're doing things like that so she's polishing the silverware or yeah. we're creating art or music mm -hmm. and I believe is when we're in this state that yeah. we can mm -hmm. receive those connections from the other world in, in whatever way they come yeah, through that so, could yeah. well be the case I know mm. that the housekeeper is particularly sensitive as well and also has a very good relationship yeah. with 
the house like she's very respectful she feels quite um protective over it and I think mm. that the past residents see that in her and mm. show themselves to her more often last year we had uh I had an experience when we were all sitting at the dining table it's a very long thin dining table and actually the dining table it is a room but it's actually not it could almost be considered another hallway and there's a door to outside on one side and then if you were to walk all the way through the dining hall and then through a door that's currently locked it would take you to the the stone hallway with the footsteps and yeah. and that's where the movement this walking movement mm-hmm. happens mm-hmm. and we were sitting at the dining table all of us having dinner and out of the corner of my eye I saw a person mm-hmm. walking down the length of the dining table behind the woman opposite me mm-hmm. And I genuinely thought that it was just one of our guests that got up to go to the bathroom or get a drink and was coming back. So I looked up and kind of went, I shouldn't say like this on a listening podcast, but I kind of turned my head as if to see who it was that was coming. You know, if if you're sitting at a table and someone comes back, you kind of turn up and and you allow them yeah sure. back yeah. Through. and as I did that uh, Ginger our psychic lady looked up as well because she was mm. sitting opposite me and she saw the same thing but she saw it it came behind me okay and yeah. she said and we she said did you see that mm. and I said yes <laughs> And it was a shadow of a person. Oh, okay. But it yeah. was, you know, out of the corner of your eye, you think you're seeing yeah. a person, but it wasn't. There was <clears throat> none of the none of the other ladies were out of their seats. I just mm-hmm. thought that maybe they were. And so it was just a a presence yeah. person moving around the dining mm-hmm. table and mm-hmm. It's funny because before all of this, I think I would have felt really fearful of yeah. this kind of encounter. But mm. in in that in that setting, it didn't feel scary at all. I felt like there were just it's just another dimension, or there's just the past residents, and they're just there. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we found ourselves starting to talk to them a little bit. You oh, know? Great. Thank you for yeah. thank you for letting yeah. us in your house. Yeah. We really love it. It's such a beautiful place. Yeah. Um, please close the clock door. <laughs> 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 Just keep it closed for a little while, please. <laughs> and um, I don't know whether that has encourage them to show themselves more or um Mm. or whether it was just whether it was just ginger being there and being particularly sensitive to the different people you know she said there there are multiple people she heard someone one night when she was supposed to be trying to get sleep um really late at night playing a flute or a recorder. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like they were practicing. And then eventually she shouted down or spoke mm. quietly down the stairs. Could you please stop that? I'm trying to sleep. Mm. And it stopped. Um, uh, so yeah. it sounds, sounds like they're rather than just like a past memory, they are active spirits. Yeah. That they yeah. are sort of interacting. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, rather than a kind of a, a you know the stone tape theory, mm. um, it it almost feels like they are very aware of the people that are there now. You know, I'm going to knock on the window to get you, to <laughs> yeah. and I'm going to 
um, you know, a whisper in your ear and um, yeah, I, it does feel like they, they're aware or maybe at least some of them are, there might be a mixture mm. between yeah. the two. So this year when we went, which was just back in June, we, it, it was absolutely fascinating because we got to know the housekeeper really well. Mm. We spoke to her as much as we could about the experiences that she'd had. And um, I'm not going to like go over all of them because yeah, hey, there's sure. too many, but also it's kind of her, her, her experiences. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Well, sure. yeah. We certainly had other things. I actually, there was um, one afternoon when we were all sitting in the big drawing room. Hmm. We were doing an, an art lesson because that's what we're there for. Yeah. And we're doing a drawing drawing lesson. We were all sitting in various parts of this big drawing room. And again, out of the corner of my eye, um, here to the right hmm. I thought one of again one of our guests had got up and left the room to go to the bathroom or to get a drink or something and this time it wasn't a dark shadow it was a really light shadow it was like somebody was wearing white clothing okay. that's the only way I can describe it and I again looked up and followed the shape. Mm. I was really confused. <laughs> followed the shape going out the door. And again saw that one of our one of our ladies had also seen it because she looked uh, up and looked out the yeah. door. And yeah. I said to her, Did somebody just leave? And she said, I think somebody just left. Uh-huh. And 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 then I looked around and did the the old teacher head count thing. <laughs> you used yeah. to be a teacher as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I used to be a teacher. I used to be yeah. a te- art teacher in primary <laughs> school, and so the, that old teacher head yeah. count. You know, we're all here because yeah. I was going to say somebody's left. Let's just pause till yeah, sure. And I wasn't actually teaching the lesson. Karen was teaching the lesson. Mm. I was mm. sitting with the other ladies doing the lesson and so I was gonna say oh let's just Karen let's just pause somebody's left but nobody had left and I was like that's so bizarre and so so I thought yeah could you describe that again so was that this person that you saw sitting down and got up to leave or I saw them walk behind there was a sofa in I was sitting on the floor next to the coffee table yeah and just next to me, a little bit further away, there was a mm. sofa that was, there was a space between the sofa yeah. and the wall. I see. And yeah. Actually, in that wall is an opening that goes through to the dining table. And then right. and then at the end of the sofa and a little bit further on is the doorway that goes through to the, that lead, eventually leads to the kitchen. Yeah, sure. And mm-hmm. But to the right of that sofa, further along, there's like a whole heap more of drawing room. There's like another sofa and more chairs. And so some of the ladies were sitting back there. So I saw the movement behind the sofa Mm. and go through that door. Yeah. I thought that it was one of the ladies that was behind me that I hadn't Mm -hmm. seen them actually out of a chair, if that makes sense. Yeah, sure. And um, so I went through to try and find the housekeeper because I thought maybe it was her. And she was nowhere to be seen. And so I texted her, like, where are you? Did you just come in the room? I was starting to not panic, but starting to mm. doubt my eyes, you know. And um, and then eventually she came through and she said, no, no, no. I was in the apartment, the apartment that belongs to the owner. Um, and she said, yeah, there is a woman in white in this castle oh, right. um, mm. that, that, um, that hangs around this area, the mm. stairway 
Mm. And then this super spooky thing was that that evening, as Karen and I were driving back to my house, because we're not lucky enough to get to sleep in the castle, we have to sleep in my little oh. house. <laughs> I was imagining you all sort of, again, the wonderful rooms. The well, castle. the ladies sleep in the castle, but if we yeah. slept there, we wouldn't have enough room for all the ladies. Sure, so we sleep yeah. In my house. And yeah. Then, and as we were driving home, we were like, let's listen to the, the latest Modern Fairy Sightings podcast. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I put it on and immediately Joe started speaking about women in white encounters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <gasps> and it's like, that is just, so I texted her mm. that night. Joe, mm. I just <laughs> A woman in white encounter, and then put your podcast on, and you were talking about women in white. It was yeah. just so bizarre. It's like an affirmation, um, isn't it? When yeah. that happens, that's the way I interpret it anyway. I mean, is that yeah. how you felt? Yeah. Because it was definitely yeah. a woman. Mm. Um, and it was definitely someone wearing very light colored clothing. It was like a white. Mm. shadow but not a mist it it it's difficult when you see something out of the corner of your eye yes because you can still I don't actually go with the skeptics theory of that your your mind's making these things up no I think that no do I <laughs> I appreciate that there are a lot of things to debunk in mm. the um, fairy, paranormal, UFO realm. Mm. I think that there uh, there's something to be said for a really good debunking of the kind of people that make stuff up and watch your videos in order Mm. to get views on their YouTube channels. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, But when you have something genuine happen, it's like, how can you debunk that? Because I'm not seeing like white mists out of the corner of my eye Mm. every couple of days. No. And also the one of the other ladies also saw something. She looked up as well and she thought mm. somebody left the room. So when you have corroboration between yeah. two people, that's also harder to debunk, I think. And yeah. I, yeah. I think sometimes those debunkers, some of their excuses. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever listened to the absolutely amazing Danny Robbins podcast on Cam. Yes. I have, yeah, I do love that. And yeah. and I and I love the debunking sections, but sometimes I'm like, come on, you're really grasping at debunking straws here. <laughs> debunking <laughs> straws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like I, for me, it's the feeling you have in your body. Mm-hmm. It's an instant knowing. Yeah. We can't prove that to anyone else. It's a very personal experience. It's an instant knowing. You don't forget that experience mm. ever. Yeah. So I think that's the difference between when we imagine, you know, imagining things. Yeah. And I don't put the imagination's very powerful yeah. and not to be derided either. But I think it, it's just a knowing in your body. It's an instant primal thing that we have of a recognition of yes that was something that I saw I experienced I felt it with my sixth sense as well and I think the interesting thing is that I do appreciate that if you were going to go into a really old castle Mm. which there are a lot of in Scotland and you were to sit in a room on your own in a castle with all the lights turned off that your imagination could very well make up Mm. feelings for you that that of things being there but when you're 
just sitting enjoying yourself painting Mm. and you're not thinking like that first footsteps like I wasn't even thinking about ghosts we were just standing actually going oh this place is just so beautiful and amazing oh Mm. somebody's coming along the corridor and actually those experiences all of those experiences that I've had in that castle none of them have been frightening and all of them have been very unexpected Mm. I've not been looking for them and um even though in consequent years I know that there's something in that castle I'm not going in um walking around trying holding my breath trying to see if somebody's going to come down the corridor it's when it's always been when me or other people have been doing something completely distracted like Hmm. so I'll tell you another couple of quick stories one of them was our chef which was a different chef different caterer and he'd never been to the castle before and he was walking through to give us our food and Hmm. coming backwards and forwards from the kitchen to the dining hall to give us our food and he came through to the dining room and said is there somebody did somebody leave the table because I'm serving the food now is there somebody and we went no we're all here because he was like are you ready to eat kind of thing we're like no we're all here sitting Mm -hmm. waiting for our lovely delicious meal and he said because somebody just walked outside the past the window (gasps) and you could see on his face he the he he was a little bit scared you could see the cogs turn and I so I went back through to the morning room with him Mm. and he was hilarious actually he was he was going he was walking backwards and forwards yeah the window trying to debunk it he's he's like it was definitely not reflection yeah as we do don't we we took the sort of thing we do I can't see a reflection now it's definitely not a reflection of me Mm. And he went, I wonder where my other chef is. No, Mm. he's in the kitchen, busy preparing the food. So we were the only people. (laughs) And he went, I saw the shape of a person as I walked past the window, walking Mm. past me outside. Yeah. So we said to the housekeeper, we told her and she (laughs) she just went, yeah there's ghosts in the garden as well yeah I don't know. <laughs> like matter of fact and so yeah. afterwards he was like a little bit scared there was one day that he had to come in early we were all out on an excursion and so he was coming in on his own to set up mm-hmm. for dinner mm-hmm. and he's like, I think I'll just go and turn all the lights on <laughs> <laughs> Now a quick break with some news from me. Hello dear listeners, the Fairy Whispering Podcast is an independent show entirely produced by me. To keep the show rolling, please show your support by becoming a monthly subscriber on the podcast Buzzsprout website or on my Fairy Whisperer Buy Me A Coffee page and by following, sharing with a friend and leaving a five star review. Also... If you or someone you know has had a fairy encounter or other unexplained encounter, I'd love to hear from you. You can send me your story to claire at fairywhisperer.co.uk. All of these links are in the show description. Thank you. Now back to the episode. (laughs) I'd be the same. I'd be like, yeah, I'll put the light on. (laughs) But he wasn't, he was just walking past to serve food. He wasn't, he wasn't in a frame of mind where he was thinking ghost, ghost, ghost. He Mm. was just serving us food and thought, genuinely thought that one of us was not at the dining table. And did he have to wait until we were back before? Sure. No. And so he wasn't, I think when those kind of things happen, you can't use overactive imagination as an excuse because no. at that point your 
imagination isn't running overdrive. He was in work mode. Mm -hmm. Um, There was one in the on the last day. Yeah. Um, all our guests had gone. Mm -hmm. They had all left, and we, Karen and I, were in the castle with the housekeeper and the like the um the manager, I guess you would call her the woman, the state manager, the woman who or who runs the renting out of the castle. Mm. And we were actually talking ghost stories for a really long time, like an hour and a half. (laughs) (laughs) And none of them were spooky. It was just things like, you know, the, the, the manager said that she's had instances where as she's walking down a hallway and apparently there's more happens in the apartment of the owner than in the castle even yeah uh, mm-hmm. somebody they pulled her pocket so her mobile phone fell out of the, her back oh. pocket and yeah so that, loads of little stories and as we were talking hmm. the footsteps came down the corridor and we were standing in this tiny little, really cute little snug lounge that's at the mm. end of that corridor. And we were just all standing chatting and all four of us at the same time said, there's the footsteps. Did you hear yeah. that? Yeah. And they stopped outside the door to the snug that we were in. Mm. And we didn't see anything because we're not sensitive enough. But the housekeeper said, Hmm. he's right outside watching us. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it sounds like this mixture of prankster sort of energy, little little pranks, and then these watchful kind of guardians, past residents that are just keeping an eye on what you're doing, how you're you're respecting their space. Yeah, there was yeah. there was uh, there was one night when we were all having dinner, and I was sitting at the head of the table, mm-hmm. and Karen was sitting at the other head of the table. It's like one of these big, long, thin castle mm-hmm. dining tables where the two people at the heads are really far away from each other, and you can't actually <laughs> in those movies Wave. where couples that don't <laughs> talk to each other. Yeah. They- married couples that don't want to talk to each other um, and my uh, my side was where the door the, the door right behind me mm. and I didn't see a shadow this time and this would be debunked by the debunkers as my overactive imagination but I know it wasn't because we were just mm. having a lovely dinner I wasn't thinking about ghosts and I felt the shift in energy of the air of somebody walking down the length of the table Mm. and then they walked round and they stood behind me Mm. and peered over my shoulder and there was no air but I just you know when you feel like you've got to learn yeah and and I felt that a lot in my house growing up in one particular room there was somebody behind watching me you'd and Mm. I don't feel it on a daily basis I'm not feeling the only other time I felt that was actually strangely enough not long after my dad died for a few months I would be in the kitchen and there would Mm. be somebody standing behind me Mm. And and then it, that feeling just went mm-hmm. after a few months. And I wondered whether oh. it was the presence of my dad. That's that's beautiful. I, I really, I mean, I believe that these, you know, our ancestors' spirits come in yeah. at certain times to support us or, you know, really sorry to hear that news, by the way, of your, your dad passing away. And, but that, that sounds very comforting as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. to have that experience of him feeling his presence for a while I felt that with my grandfather at times when I've mm-hmm. been through difficult times and I've actually spoken to a medium they've said oh your grandfather is with you at the moment helping you through this time 
Yeah. And he pops. I've got, it's really comforting, isn't it? Yeah. I've even got random photos like on my on my phone. I have like my OneDrive photos as a slideshow for my oh, screen yeah. saver. <laughs> it's amazing the amount of times this has happened when I'm going through a difficult time and I need a bit of support. The one photo that I have of my grandfather that I'd saved to my OneDrive, you know, in the last few months pops up. Really? It happened the other day. Yeah. yeah. I was like, right, okay, thank you. I know you. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like he's backing up what I'm thinking. Or that's the way I interpret yeah. it. It's all very personal, isn't it? But yeah. 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 So... Yeah. I just I I don't think it was funny because Karen was at the opposite end of the table and she started mm-hmm. looking at me like quizzingly and I was like there's somebody behind me and I and I and I I I was I stood I stood for it but that's the wrong expression Mm. I I managed to um I managed to kind of allow it to happen for a few minutes but after a while I it it became uncomfortable and I just yeah and I just Mm. I stood up and I went and sat next to her for a few minutes Mm. and she was like what was wrong and I said there was somebody (laughs) standing Mm. behind me (laughs) and they weren't being menacing they were just I just felt like you say that there are these guardians of the house Mm. that were just just checking that everything was going okay kind of thing yeah no I'm interested as well, Lucy, about the art you were creating and whether any of these spirits or um, anything like a message or symbols or anything came through the art that's being created during those few days. Do you think that's that was... so interesting? Because we actually use the house quite a lot mm. as inspiration mm-hmm. for our art so we did we did little still lives using some of the objects um, from around the house we Mm. took a lot of photos Mm. we went on a hunt around the house the house is so beautiful and there's so many beautiful portraits of past residents Mm. so we really were was we were paying attention to uh, the finer details and the people like yes that we we it's not that we were just sitting on the sofa and not looking we were like looking closely at all of the portraits of the people that that had lived there we did one exercise where we did a portrait but we had our own (laughs) We did our own interpretation. So we used mm. one of the portraits on the wall and we did we did our own versions and then turned this woman into a fairy. Mm. Mm. So, wow. Um, oh, that sounds lovely. Yeah. I wonder how she I wonder if if her spirit was around, whether what she whether she came close. Did you feel like while maybe she you... was the one that walked through the door because mm. that was it was during that I hadn't put I hadn't put that two and two together actually until just now I hadn't thought about it in that way but she, mm. it was that uh we were doing that exercise when I saw the woman in white right oh I've got goosebumps yeah I hadn't thought about it that's super interesting I, I tell you what, what I'm going to do, because I said I would do this at the beginning, but I'm going to do it now. Feels like a good time to do it. I'm going to draw okay. one of these lovely fairy cards that I have by um, Sharon McLeod. Ooh. The packet. I'll have to they're look. like these. They're called Fairy Magic by Sharon McLeod. They're yeah. just really yeah. simple. They've got the messages on the back. They're really simple little cards that I just like. So I'm going to ask, shall I, what, shall I ask a question about the, the woman? Yeah, yeah, do it. What shall I ask? So was the lady, Lucy, 
saw at the corner of her eye, the lady in white, was she the lady in the portrait? I don't know if this will give me these cards are right. Oh, just, one just jumped out. Oh, you've got to go with that one then. Yeah. Oh, this is to do with cats, the cat she. Ooh. Um, a cat lives nine lives, then transforms into a witch. Cat she walks with you at this time. You have luck and destiny on your side. You are a magical being in the process of transforming and shape-shifting, preparing to birth your visions and plans. You are ready to weave your magic. Luck is on my side. I, luck is on my side. I believe in my vision. So it's, it's like luck and self-belief and weaving it, magic. The, the, interesting, the interesting little bit that I'm getting from that yeah is the word shape shifting and the fact that i just said that we turned her into a fairy yes shape shifting so i don't mm. know if that's me finding meaning or mm. whether there is a connection there i'll just draw one more and see what this is. so this one is um oh. San Ped- St. Pedro fairy. That's a type of cactus, hallucinogenic cactus. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. And she, look, she's got little horns, a bit like um, Ellen of the Ways. Go into your heart space. Imagine it is a sacred grove. In the heart, we are all one and equal. This fairy is a master teacher who helps you grow, learn and awaken. She helps open your eyes to what what already exists miracles are taking place the saint pedro fay help you find new belief systems and bring you healing from depression and grief miracles are in the making i believe in miracles oh i like the sound of that one Mm. go into your heart space so I don't know if those relate, but you saying the catchy kind of relates to shape shifting. That that yeah. leapt out to me when I was reading that as well. Shape shifting, but yeah. And so, I think I'm, I'm gonna have to ponder. I always find with cards that when I hear when I read the the meaning mm. and the shape sometimes I think oh I don't know what that is and then as the day goes on Mm. I realize what the significance is or I realize that the significance isn't necessarily the thing that we ask the question of but it's Mm. something else that I suddenly go "Ah, that's yeah yeah be interesting to know a bit more about the woman in the painting wouldn't it yeah maybe so I was wondering if you, you, before we started talking, Lucy, you shared about there's a couple of experiences I'd like to try and talk with you before we finish. Yeah. If possible. <laughs> there's the, the blue orb yeah. and, and the hair that wasn't a hair. Yes. <laughs> so that which one would very, you like to start yeah. with? <laughs> I'll start with the blue orb. It's fairly quick, yeah. fairly quick story because yeah. our time is uh, yeah, short. That's fine. Um, but that took place um, two years ago, I think. Do you know, the mm-hmm. last three years, the ta- I've got such time discombobulation. I know, I think we're all the same, aren't we? Sometimes yeah. I yeah. say something from last year and then realise it was three mm-hmm. years ago. It's like, yep. it's almost like that. It's. I feel like we, we've lost time. I feel like yes. time didn't exist in the same way in the last three years yeah I I get mm. I and I and I get constantly get confused over when things took place and but I, it was definitely during that kind of pandemic height but not the first we well so I think it was 2021 mm. and I was walking with a my friend that I always dog walk with mm-hmm. 
And it was before I had my dog, but she also has a greyhound and we were walking her dog. And we went to these woods that I think that, I think that you will are clear, but you know what I mean when I say that there are certain woods that have a feeling and yes. there are certain woods that are just yeah and there are certain woods where you feel there are certain woods for me where I feel like the woods are watching me mm, yes and that they are a living entity almost mm, mm. and so we were walking her dog in these woods and the, at the end of the path in these woods, it's not the end of the path, but it's the end of the path for me. I mm-hmm. can't go any further. Is a little hut that has this really ramshackle that has an open doorway and an open window and I can't walk past it. There's oh, yeah, I get the chills when you're talking about that. Hut. Mm. watching me from inside the hut there is definitely something in that hut that when I get near it I have to turn around and go back and do you you think people have practiced magic there like dark magic or I'm really not sure what it is what's going on there there's just a funny it's just a funny, funny feeling there that I just feel like, you mm. know, when you get the feeling that there is something saying to yeah. you, don't any yes. longer. Oh, yeah, I've had that a few times. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And um, and so we we'd walk down and we were turning back. And it's a beautiful woods, very magical, huge, big old trees. And at the time of the year that we were there, and it, again, it was it was evening. We we at mm-hmm. this point during kind of pandemic, um, wasn't quite lockdown, but like we were doing evening dog, lots of evening dog walks, and, <laughs> and it was so it was twilight. It was, I want to say early autumn Mm. or there were ferns in that wood that were taller than me Mm. so Mm. everything had grown there were so we were walking through the path there were ferns this tall Uh and and I think I was talking to her about um I think I was talking to her about the fairy experience that I'd been speaking to Joe Hickey Hall about. Mm. And I looked over and hovering, hovering above the line of the foliage Mm. was electric blue light that's wow. all I can describe it as yeah and probably maybe 20 30 40 feet away from me so it wasn't mm-hmm. super close mm-hmm. and it was not an animal's eye because there was only one yeah. and it was too tall because yeah. the ferns were about my I'm five I'm only five foot three but the Mm. ferns were like five foot tall you know they weren't they weren't only like a foot tall they were really overgrown the 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 this section of the woods was quite sparse with trees but it was like Mm. a flat bit with loads of smaller trees and then all of these ferns and I Mm. looked over and it was just hovering this um mm. it was like a 
how would I describe the blue? It was like an an ultramarine sort of bright uh -huh. electric blue. That's the yes, I bet. Which is highly unnatural, isn't it? To see, yeah. apart from blue flowers that we see, yeah. to see something that colour. Yeah. In nature. Yeah. Mm. And and then it was gone. So mm. that was that. It's a very short story. But to me, I just don't know what that was. What was the feeling you got from it? But I mean, when you, was um, there a feeling that you had? Anywhere. I felt like it was wasn't a coincidence that I was talking about yeah. experiences mm. and then saw that. Mm. Again, I felt like it was something in the woods watching, you know? Yeah. Mm. Like, I feel like sometimes we are privileged to be allowed to be in these places yes and we should respect them mm -hmm. and then every so often there's something or a feeling that reminds you that you are not alone in them mm. does that sound too no out there? Uh, no 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 it doesn't <laughs> not to you <laughs> no, I'm very it. my mom it would i speak to so many people or you must as well about experience like experiences like this yeah I did a painting of Wisman's Wood, which I'm going to frame for my mum, actually, where I, I painted, you know, like just psychically saw all these orbs. It's in my cupboard, but my, my mystical art cupboard behind me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to get this framed for my mum, actually, but oh, it's got I want blue to see that. orbs, but there's, there's lots of orbs in the background. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's beautiful. Um, there's some pink wow. ones. Or, yeah. That's gorgeous, Claire. I thought I'd painted some. Yeah, there is. There's another one I've done with blue, but there are some little bits of blue in there and things. But that's yeah. how I was seeing fairy presence. I was listening oh. to another podcast recently and I can't. It's so it's really gonna annoy me because I can't even mm. remember what podcast it was or what episode it was. It was only last week, maybe, or the week before. Mm. <laughs> and that and there was a guest that spoke about seeing a blue orb in the woods. Mm. And I went, Oh wow, it's not just me then. So no, you know, it's yeah. interesting when you hear mm. uh when you hear those stories mm. well there's all the stories of willow the wisp isn't there yeah various you know people have come up with various theories and things but i mean i've met i've spoken to people that have seen them um so there's so much that we don't know isn't there about energy yeah. and about how yeah. i just did a i've just released an episode speaking to my guest Jen who I visited. I listened to it I was just about to say that was absolutely fascinating mm -hmm. she was talking about her experiences and seeing yeah. them in the cameras and slowing yeah. them down and yeah yeah and I've captured them on an episode that I did with Kate Hair Girl Ray a few months ago she had loads of orbs yeah and I've had them appear around me as well. So there's some, whether it's related to our energy or I think it's a mixture. I think it's probably related to our energy sometimes and fairy energy, you know, our energy field. But then nature has its own energy yeah. and these beings travel using these orbs as well so some of the orbs that gems captured have got little beings in them faces uh -huh. um 
sp- you know, yeah. spirits and fairy beings. So, yeah, I think it, to see that, you're really, it's a real privilege, isn't it? To be yes. Able to, it's almost uh-huh. like a hello from, oh, you're talking about us. Yeah. Yeah. And just like with the, with the sort of ghostly paranormal things, um, it's always an unexpected it's not you can't you can't will yourself to see those things and mm. have them happen that they almost for me certainly maybe not for other people but they happen when you're not expecting them so yeah it's all these people that say well like in this day and age of cameras why haven't you got a photo and it's like well but you're not expecting it so you have no and then as soon as if you were to get your phone out, it's it's gone. It's gone. As soon, you don't get a chance to do that kind of thing. And it's no. it's almost like these things happen when you you're not focusing on um hmm. wanting them to happen. You're thinking about other things or you're in, in a different kind of mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It is I see it as a sort of a meditative mindful mindset where you're yeah. minding like you are walking on minds your own business literally perhaps just enjoying you know open I think having an open heart helps and yeah. not being distracted by phones and things and then that's when yeah. these things happen and and yeah. also the connection that you have with those woods that you've yeah. established some reciprocity yeah. with that place yeah yeah maybe that they're recognizing you as oh she's back <laughs> she's talking about us <laughs> maybe because yeah. the other the one with the uh, the hair not a hair yes um, mm. that was a different woods but mm. the I only started walking in those woods quite recently mm. um mostly because my my dog is a little bit of a stress head sometimes and during the summer um there's just too many cats too mm. many so to to put this this experience into context mm. uh, my dog is a greyhound and yeah if anyone knows greyhounds and my not all greyhounds but my greyhound has an extremely high prey drive so even though he is a super lazy gentle dog if you yeah. see a cat or um even a leaf blowing in the wind or uh, a little someone else's little funny dog like a chihuahua or something he gets super excited yes he, greyhounds can see for 270 degrees so they can see all the way around oh, and they can wow. see for half a mile so their eyesight is extremely keen mm. and they particularly pick up on moving things mm. um, so if if he sees something darting or moving he is on it before Mm. I've even spotted it Mm. and during the summer there were just too many cats around the neighborhood we call them tasty snacks in (laughs) my house and um, so I started walking them in these woods because these Mm. woods were quite quiet and not as many people walk their dogs there even Hmm. and the first time I went in these woods I called them the woods at watches because uh, these woods are there is something slightly unnerving actually about these woods so and it and you know how in one of your episodes you were talking about um, bodies of water and crossing bodies of water? Yeah. It was the one about your house and the water. Oh. I first contacted you about. I can't can't quite. Maybe, I'm sure it was one of your episodes. Maybe. Oh, was I? Maybe when I was talking in an interview about the, the house I lived in. Yeah, with the running uh, water. With the running water. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And so in these woods... Um, these woods are full of crisscrossing areas yes. of uh, running water, little streams, mm. and 
and crossroads of paths. So there are, there's a, it's not a big woods. They're quite small. And, mm. but funnily enough, on really old maps, because I had a look on some really old maps, they are called wilderness. Right. The, the woods are called wilderness. Yes. Ah. Um, mm. It's, um, it's quite a small woods and there are, so there are little crossroads all over the place. The woods are full of crossroads and there are streams that cross over the path is into crossroads. Mm. And so as soon as I walk over one set of crossroads, yeah, I could feel myself going into an area mm. that was watchful. And the whole time I was in that bit, I felt mm. like I needed to walk faster because I wasn't wanted there right. until I reached an, a stream and a crossroads and crossed that bit and I was out of it. And I felt mm. a shift in the in the heaviness of the atmosphere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there are probably certain people in my life, like my adult son, who would say, Mum, you're around the band, it's all your imagination, but I don't think it is. <laughs> and mm. so, but I still walked my dog there because it's a good place to walk my dog. And a few times I walked there, I, I would say, I know you're here mm-hmm. and I know you're watching me mm. as I walked through the woods. I just like look around and say, I, I know, I know I'm in your woods and I know you're watching me. Mm. I could feel that something, it, the really dense trees, something in the trees watching the path watching the people walking through the woods yes. and there are a whole heap of crisscrossy paths going all the way through these woods mm. and I've gone on I've kind of tried all of them out and there are certain ones that if it was twilight or if I was on my own I would either walk quite quickly or wouldn't go that way Mm. And so there was one night that me and my friend, the friend that I'd been with before, mm. said, let's go for a twilight walk in the woods. And she calls them the spooky woods. I call them the woods that watches. <laughs> Both and, great names. <laughs> yeah. And so we took our dogs mm. and she's also got a great hand. And we walked through all the paths of the woods yeah and we said right let's just stop and listen Mm. so we stopped and we just stood there and there was absolute silence not a single sound and then there was five to ten minutes of intense chattering of bats bats flying over our heads backwards and forwards to wherever mm. they were nesting and I love bats so we just yes. did the bats yeah and I absolutely love seeing bats flying mm. our dogs meanwhile are just standing with us because they're mm. pretty patient dogs greyhounds are quite good at just standing waiting and um, and in the distance down the path we could see rabbit hair I mm. think it was a rabbit more than a hair mm. and um and so I said oh maybe we should move on because if my dog sees that he's gonna go absolutely crazy and um, this mm. hair rabbit this rabbit mm. was just standing sitting on the path yeah and then it it leapt off into the into the bushes beside Mm. the path for a little bit just Mm. low low bushes Mm. not really big bushes then 
so we started walking hmm. thinking while it's hiding we'll yeah. walk along the path but we were walking quite slowly and then the hair came back onto the path and it oh. and it hopped very slowly along mm. the path towards us and neither of our dogs spotted it and we wow. stopped yeah we watched the hair hop it the mm. it was watching us mm. that's all i can think it was it was it was watching us mm-hmm. it hopped it hopped along the path mm. past our dogs who were looking around like there was nothing there God. and we both said our dogs can't see that that's really so, weird yeah it's bizarre isn't it and it's the dogs weird. were just kind of standing there like chilling <laughs> And that's the only time I ever ever seen my dog stand and chill if there was a little fluffy mm. thing within mm. his his vicinity. <laughs> and then the rabbit hopped past, it stopped again, it looked back at us, it watched us for a little while. Mm. And then it hopped off down the path. My friend turned to me and said, That wasn't a rabbit. No. <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean prey animal just wouldn't run towards danger at all, would it? Yeah. It wouldn't it wouldn't go so nonchalantly past two huge big mm. dogs. And the dogs there's no way I mean my my dog on other walks has has what been walking 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 chilled as can be and then will suddenly mm. leap like a lizard and stick uh-huh. his head in the bush because there's a toad in there or a bird or something uh-huh. and he, he's gone for it like he is his reflexes are so quick mm. that he's, he's gone for it before i even realized there was something there yeah so mm. but he was they were both literally <laughs> standing going like this at mm. one point I think they even looked at it and they didn't mm. see they didn't see it and my friend said it's the woods yeah it's I, by by that what does she mean by that it's the woods that the, that the rabbit was part of the woods right yeah, because there were all these stories, aren't there, or if, in folklore of fairies shape shifting into yes. rabbits? Yes, exactly, and that's exactly what crossed my mind. That it was a yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a really an animal. So was it? Did it appear solid? And yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Because so I've seen hares here in Devon. Very rarely, but a couple of occasions. And they, the hares are massive, aren't they? Like yes. rabbits are like little. This was more of a rabbit than a fluffy, hare. Fluffy things. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. That's so, that is so weird. <laughs> I know. I know. Wow. Yeah. What was your feeling? I mean, what, what's, what was your sensation? Did you pick up from it? Did you both feel anything in particular? I felt like that it was a creature of the forest, whether that was forest energy or Mm. fey energy, that was checking us out under the disguise of an animal. Because we'd stop to listen. Yeah. Mm. If that makes sense. So do you mean that it was because you were paying attention? Yeah. 
yeah, it presented itself. Um, yeah. It's like, ah, okay. Because normally yeah. I would just walk, dog walk through, like other people mm. dog walk through. And, and there's probably, a, there's not a huge amount of people that walk through there, but I would probably... I'd probably hazard a guess that 99% of them walk through there without any um, gut feeling at all. Mm. Of it. They're just walking through the woods. Yeah. and you I don't know whether yeah. that I've got an overactive imagination, but I don't think it's that. I, want, I, I don't know if I'm more sensitive to those kinds of feelings or mm. something, but I did say to one other person, um, have you ever had a funny feeling about those woods? And she said, yes, I won't go anywhere near them at night. Right. I'm getting chills. And we <laughs> don't feels, live, yeah. I, if anyone from yeah. America or even England mm. is listening, they would go, well, I wouldn't go near any woods at night. But mm. I live in a really safe part of Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, I would probably mm. walk my dog in the woods at night with a head torch mm. without worrying too much that something bad's going to happen to me. So it, it's, yeah, it's not, um, it's not like other parts of the world where you no. worry about, you know, lots of criminals or anything like that yeah. but yeah there's something there's just it is the those woods are the I get more feeling from those than I did from the woods with the orb mm. but it it's on a similar vein but mm-hmm. there are other woods that I walk in all the time mm. that I just, I just these are just woods they're yeah. just woods yeah be interesting to look at the history of the land there that's something I've that I really tried to do some have research you? and I haven't managed to get anything online with a google so I I would imagine whether I would have to maybe go a bit further and start looking in documents in libraries and things yeah well it's something that I I like to do for people because I I look at maps um but the Library of Scotland has got lots of old oh, maps okay. online. Um, and there's another website I use called Archie Maps. Archie, sorry, Archie Maps, like A-R-C-H-I, which I pay. It's like a monthly subscription for that because okay. there's lots of, they've got archaeological maps. Okay. And they show you archaeological discoveries and layers of history and I love old maps <laughs> terrain terrain and things like yeah. that and something else I do is remote viewing so with the episode I've just done I did some remote viewing of James Gordon and looked at the history and did some psychic art of, of that area as well yes. so I love that I love uncovering the layers of history because there might not be any human history in those woods they might but then things might have gone on around the woods yes uh-huh. battles or um who knows there, uh, the Which person can't? said that this is a sensitive subject sorry but the person mm. that said that she didn't like to go in it in the evening she did know of at least two people who had um taken their own lives in those woods right yeah so I don't know whether part of the energy it comes from that mm. um I don't know whether the slightly unnerving because I would say that there's an unnerving energy there mm. which was different from the rabbit energy that mm. felt more wood spirit to me woodland mm-hmm. spirit um rather than human you know yes 
Um, but I would def I would really love to learn more about that area and see if mm. there's something that goes further back. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then there's all the witch trials, which yeah. you can Google as well. Yeah. And there was actually time. one of the one of the witches, mm. I think one of the one of the witches in the northeast of Scotland actually did come from round about my village. Oh, well, there you go. I'm getting chills again. Yeah. And there's also yeah. a lot of legends about mm. um, giants <laughs> yeah. and stones. Mm. And there's Pictish archaeological. There's a big mountain near me mm-hmm. that has a lot of um, folklore surrounding it. Right. Oh, um, wow. So, um, yeah, it would be really interesting to do a little bit more research on that and see if there was yeah. anything that linked up. And that these yeah. woods are actually quite close to um, the main big old castle house. That Right, yeah. I, okay, and I'm getting so, chills. So, yeah, yeah. so uh, it could be related to that history. It could be a whole mixture of things, can yes. it? But, yes fascinating i'd love to know what you find out <laughs> i know i know i'll definitely keep you posted if i find oh. it i only got as far as trying to find to look at oops i found some slightly older maps that were from mm. it, sort of the late 1800s and that's where i saw that the the section of land was just called wilderness the wilderness um, yeah wow Oh, it's Which been wonderful. to me seems quite desolate, doesn't it? Sounds, yeah, sounds quite it does. Sad. A wilderness. It sounds a bit like. Well, it sounds ancient as well. Yeah, yeah. Like that is, local people are just like, well, that's the wilderness over there. Yes, and that uh-huh. would suggest that that's the edge, an edge place or in a between yeah. place. Yeah, as well. Ooh. Well, I really hope that I get up there next year and that would be so much fun Claire I would love to hang out with you and go to some spooky places it'd be amazing yeah oh fantastic and um, another thing that I'm doing which I'll just mention is on a Sunday night not every Sunday night but several Sunday nights leading up to Christmas I'm doing fairy chats now like it's like a fairy like a share, like a show and tell kind of thing, but around fairies and creativity. So I did one this Sunday, just gone. It's October now. Um, so uh, where I spoke about my artwork and then we had a little Q&A and a chat. can't believe uh, I missed that some... somehow. <laughs> well, yeah, I've got some other ones coming up. There's Have one you? on the... 22nd of October I don't know when this episode will go out but 22nd of October Sam Meredith's coming on to do some light language Uh art then I've got um oh Emma Emma Welsh that was on my episode about seeing fairies on her windowsill she does fairy art as well so she's going to talk about her fairy experiences and that and her art and then on the 19th of November I've got Jim Gem coming on to talk about her mm. fairy experiences in her garden, and crystal art that she makes. Oh, so it's just wow. like, so if you want to do one of those in future, you'd be most welcome to come. Yeah, on. I'd love to. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun, and I'm going to have to try and um, join in and and attend some of those because they sound yeah. so interesting. Well, I'll publicise them on my newsletter and on social media and podcasts and everything. Yeah. But is there? I just you... love this community. Yeah. That- We've all, you know, this this little community that started sprouting up between. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love, you know, I spoke, Joe and I have spoken about this, about this co-creative energy that is coming together. You know, we've all got yeah. our own things that we do, but we're all supporting each other in some way and feeding yes. into this sort of knowledge, stream of knowledge about fairies or creativity or whatever we're doing. 
and bring some light to people's lives yeah. along the way, hopefully. <laughs> and some a bit yeah, of magic. <laughs> a bit of magic, a bit of enchantment. So I'd love you to share what you're up to, Lucy, and where people can find you. Um yeah. Yeah, so um at the moment mostly what I'm doing is I teach two online art classes. So the one that I share with my good friend Karen Campbell is called the Celtic Collective and yeah. mm-hmm. it is we because we were so obsessed with fairies and folklore and anything Scottish and mm-hmm. fantasy art type stuff we decided to do an art class on it so mm-hmm. that we have the excuse to do <laughs> to cover lots of stuff Lovely. that we want to do and share that like just like you were just saying share that excitement with other people and our students Mm -hmm. um so we and it's like a monthly a monthly club like a monthly subscription so our students join and then every month get usually at least four lessons two from me and two from Karen Mm -hmm. we do a variety of things so sometimes we do um, based on a specific creature Mm. or you know we might do unicorns one month or things like that or we will do deep dives into artists where we'll look at other fairy artists and we'll just think about how they um how they produce some of their artwork if it's a if it's a current if it's a current artist we usually get permission from them Mm. to look at their artwork um, or one of our work we're, we're going to look at Kevin Keel in November and I don't know if you've checked out his artwork but it's amazing he does all these uh, um, black and white Kevin Keel no yeah he's on Instagram and Karen reached out and asked him if we could check out his art with our students so okay. we do different kinds of lessons like that and I also have my own class um which is called the Art Lab Association, which is um, watercolour and gouache. And I do a mixture of different, it's not fairy art as such, although there's a little bit of crossover because I can't mm. help myself. But um, that's, again, a monthly club. So that's why I mostly do. We do have a podcast, Karen and I, but we are really rubbish <laughs> because we've only recorded one in like the last eight months. <laughs> oh, We're just so busy that we yeah. just to get around to doing it. And it's kind of, we were really good for the first year and a half. We were recording mm. like fortnightly or weekly. And then we just got busy and they kind of got fewer and further. But yeah. we keep saying we must revive it soon we must get it started again because <laughs> it is so yeah. much fun doing yeah um, so that's that's me for the most part my website is just lucybridenart.com mm-hmm. um, and that's I mean if you type in that name you can find me on all the different kind of yeah social medias um, but you know what it's like, Claire. There's yeah, just I know. hours in the day to do everything. I, I I often wish I had clones, so that I know <laughs> one of them could finish writing my book, or you know, books I want to write. The other yeah. one could do the arts. The other one could do the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> and the other or one could run the home. Assistant. You know, else. like like rich people, an assistant, yeah. somebody to do. Like cooking and cleaning oh and make all my meals so that I just yes. can on painting and not have to stop and do stuff like that. That's <laughs> what that's what I do. If I had like won, won the lottery, that's what I do. I'd have like people, you know, sort of helping me do all the sort of social media stuff and all of that. So I could just focus on the creating. Yeah. Yeah, I know, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's cleaner for the home, someone that does my laundry. All of those kinds of things. Wouldn't it be lovely? <laughs> oh, be heaven. <laughs> I think I'm treating myself like I, I've decided this winter that I'm going, <laughs> it's really boring, I know, but it's really practical. I'm, I don't want washing hanging around on radiators this winter because I don't, 
I don't have a tumble dryer. So I'm washing my washing and then I'm taking it all to the laundrette to dry it. Oh, that sounds like a great plan. Ah, it's <laughs> done, isn't it? Yeah. Done. So yeah. that's my one of my little treats to, I know it doesn't sound like much, but it's, it, oh, it's just quite heavenly, just sticking it all in, get it dried, bring it yeah. home. You've got dry washing and just put it away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, lovely, lovely speech to you. That's going off on a tangent. <laughs> <It's quite> a <laughs> tangent. <laughs> really mundane stuff. <laughs> lovely speaking to you, Lucy. Oh, it's been uh, lovely speaking to you too. Meeting with you and um yeah, I'll look and uh, keep in touch and I'll let you know when this episode's going out. And um, yeah. Definitely. And you yeah. are more than welcome to come up here to Scotland and I would love to pour some spooky oh. woods together. Wow, that'd be amazing. That is a plan. I'd love to see what you did with, you know, your photographs that you take. Mm. Were you were you do you mirror them or something? I mirror them. Yes. So interested to see what what photographs of that woods looked like through that process. Yes, I love that process. Yeah. I'm gonna do a little workshop on that. Yeah. Cause I, I love using that. But taking people out into nature and getting them to do it for themselves. Yeah. And yeah. That'd be great. Okay, have a wonderful rest of your day. Yes, um, I'm going to get out now for the, with my daughter. And yeah. Um, yeah, have a wonderful. Thanks for your time. And everything. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, Lucy. Welcome back. Thank you to my guest, Lucy, for sharing her experiences. I enjoy talking with other artists on the show and I want to go and explore that castle and the woods that watch with her. That'd be so cool and perhaps to record it for a podcast episode. Check out Lucy's website and social media which are included in the episode description and show notes on the podcast blog at fairywhisperer.co.uk. It's great when I'm talking with guests and they suddenly have an epiphany about their experience. Like when Lucy realised that the woman in white she had seen could have been the woman in the painting. Perhaps the creative spirit of the class awakened the spirit of the lady in the portrait. In episode 40 we also pondered the intersection of art and the ethereal when I spoke with my guest Lauren about his family story of a painting that was haunted by fairies. Perhaps the class's collective creative expression opened a doorway into the other world and enticed the fairy. So in folklore tradition, rabbits are associated with the underworld and its inhabitants, including the fae. In southwest of England, Both witches and fairies were believed to be able to transform themselves into rabbits at will, so people were suspicious of them. The miners were wary of these burrowing creatures. The supernatural appearance of a little white animal like a rabbit, if it crossed a miner's path, was seen as an omen not to descend the mine for fear of a catastrophe such as a collapse of the mine shaft. There is a symbol which can be found in the church at Widdicombe on Dartmoor. That's not far from where I live. It's only about a 20 minute drive. And it has a very fine tower built, it is said, by the tinners. The roof has many of the original bosses carved and painted with heads, flowers and leaves. So a boss is a, basically a chunk of wood that's been carved and then it's usually round or carved into another shape and then it's placed up in the beams of the church. One has the figure on it of St Catherine and her wheel. One boss has on it three rabbits, each with a single ear, which unite in the centre forming a triangle. One exactly similar is in Tavistock Church. So this is a well-known symbol that's attributed to being a, like a protective symbol for miners, but it also has other connotations which I won't go into here. 
This extract I've just read is from Sabine Bearing Gold, The Book of Dartmoor, and that was published in 1900. White Rabbits. Robert Hunt records a belief in warnings and tokens at Wheel Raw in Cornwall, where it was believed that a fatal accident in the mine is presaged by the appearance of a hare or white rabbit in one of the engine houses. The men solemnly declare that they have chased these appearances till they were hemmed in, apparently, without being able to catch them. The white rabbit, on one occasion being run into a wind boar lying on the ground, and though stopped in, escaped. And that's from Romances of the Miners, Robert Hunt, in Popular Romances and Drolls, published in the 19th century. So, the miners were very suspicious of anything to do with rabbits, and um, they took their suspicions very seriously in that there's, there's a whole list of superstitions that miners have about black cats and women and all sorts of things and sounds that they'd hear. Rabbits are also um, seen as lucky omens for locating treasure in the West Country. In East Devon, in 1936, Farmer Clapp discovered a hoard of golden guineas which was buried beneath an apple tree where he had seen a rabbit digging only days before. They were believed to have been buried during the Monmouth Rebellion in 1685. Possibly the owner was killed at the Battle of Sedgemoor and unable to return to retrieve his treasure. Um, this story was recorded by the Devon author J. R. W. Coxhead and he says that Farmer Clapp showed him three of the gold coins. So yeah, I've come across rabbit lore when I've been researching about pixies. Uh, as I said, they've um, it's one of the animals that pixies are believed to shapeshift into, as well as witches. And there are stories about witches and pixies. Um, pixies being captured where somebody thinks that they've captured a, a pixie and then they look in their bag and get the bag home and it's a rabbit in there and they let the rabbit out and of course that could have been the pixie that had shapeshifted into a rabbit and then there is another there's a story about the um, called Bowerman's nose where Bowerman the huntsman uh, chases a witch that disappears that changes into a rabbit um, yeah and the way that they usually decided that a witch was a rabbit is if a rabbit had been injured for example they've been hunting rabbits and then they'd wounded the rabbit the rabbit had got away and and this could be a hare as well then later on some or somebody that was identified as a, a witch usually just a innocent healing woman they'd say oh she's got a wound on her or her arm for example and that's where we wounded the rabbit on its front leg and therefore that's that proves that the witch had turned into a rabbit so yeah not a very nice side of our history that's where a lot of this folklore comes from, these old beliefs about rabbits and witches and fairies. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Claire Sylvan-Wand and this has been the Fairy Whispering Podcast. I researched, produced and hosted the podcast myself. The theme song is Oxygen by Third Girl from the Left. This is an independent show, so please show your support by subscribing, sharing with a friend and leaving a five star review. Also, if you or someone you know has had a fairy encounter or another supernatural experience, please send me your story to claire at fairywhisperer.co.uk and that's fairy spelt F-A-E-R-Y. Goodbye for now, see you next time. Remember to keep your heart open and let the wisdom of the fae and nature guide you.